Our speaker is Eric Vassier, and the title of this presentation is Photo Restoration Basics Flatbed Scanning. Mr. Vassier's biographical information can be found on page 24 of the syllabus, and the handout material for this section begins on page 142. And just a friendly reminder before we get started, please take a look and make sure that your cell phones, pagers, beepers, whatever, are either turned off or set to vibrate. <laughs> and just a reminder that no personal taping of the session, either audio or video, is permitted. And we have a lot of ground to cover this morning, so if you could please hold your questions until the end. And please join me in welcoming Eric this year. Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I always like to express my gratitude to the Creator for waking up in the morning and being here with you and seeing you with me. And I see we have some repeats, uh, not repeats, we have some people <laughs> who were here yesterday. But believe me, this is going to be a little different from yesterday. How many, raise your hand if you were here yesterday. Okay, in this class, in this class. Raise your hand. Okay, okay. I know you were at the conference. Um, and I, I also want to thank the, the OGS uh, and all the members and the board for uh, having me back. This will be the second year in a row. And it's, uh, it's a great honor to share this information with you. Well, let's get going here. Uh, we, how many of you all have a flatbed scanner? OK. And how many, how many of you are considering getting a new one, replacing it, whatever? OK. All right. Briefly, if you are considering replacing, I have some personal uh, uh, brand favorites. Or if you're looking for just a brand new one, uh, Epson, I think, is, is very nice. And they have some small ones and large ones. And in fact, for the demonstration, I'll be using one called the V350. But it's, it's pretty much obsolete now. So <laughs> you, you, you might want to contact Epson. Just Ask them what the latest incarnation of that one is. V350. Uh huh. Yeah, V350 is is people always want to know what are you using. So, uh, the Epson V350, <coughs> and and Microtech and HP. I also like those brands. I think they're very good. The uh, other thing to think about when you have a new scanner is is getting a dedicated unit if if at all possible. And what I mean by that is, you know, the all-in-ones that, that will have a printer and or fax capabilities. Uh, if one part of the printer breaks down, it can be a hassle. Because then you end up having to deal with two different pieces of hardware anyways. And usually the part that breaks down first in an in a all-in-one is the printer, the printer aspect. Whether it's a hose that breaks or whatever, you have to replace the head. It is, they are inexpensive, but at the same time, it can be a hassle. And the other thing to consider is portability. And when you're going to uh, doing your family research, you're going to someone's house, or you're going to a conference or whatever, it's really nice to have a flatbed scanner that you can carry with you. <clears throat> of course, it's still going to be a lot because you want to keep it in a box. Like, like, you, like you see here, this is the box that came with my, my uh, scanner. But what I did, of course, I keep all the, the styrofoam in the plastic bag. Epson makes it kind of neat where they put this little handle here. And the only problem with that, though, is it will rip. So, so I reinforce it with tape, you know, and a nice bungee cord. Can, will suffice as well, okay? You know, a tight bungee cord, and that'll keep it shut. Because uh, the the top of this is exposed, and the cords can fall out quite easily. So you got to stay on top of that. Some things to consider with your scanner, and one of my favorites is a lid removal, okay? And like you look at, at this lid here, it's nice that it comes up, but it really isn't easy to take off. I, I really I have to go in there with the screwdriver and some tools.
to, to, to get this lid off. Generally, the bigger scanners have that ability. With this one, they set it up so that you could put a, a thick document on there. But that's about it. The second part is a built-in transparency tray for negatives and slides. OK. Now, that's a little different from an adapter. You see, this is a flatbed scanner that has right here, it's, you can take off this part. And underneath it, it has the hardware for a 35 millimeter slide or negative. The only problem is it works off of this glass. It works this, this uh, bulb, which will read your, your printed documents or your photos, will also read the negative. So the detail isn't as precise as you might have with a dedicated slide scanner. And um, that's not part of this lecture, but I will say that I think Nikon Cool scan, it makes the best 35 millimeter slide and negative uh, scanners on the market. They're not cheap, but when it comes to scanning a huge amount of uh, 35 millimeter slides and negatives, you don't want to be cheap. Okay? However, this built in 35 millimeter uh, slide and uh, negative adapter on this Epson, I have compared it to my Nikon, and it, it is pretty good. It, it is decent, OK? Um, and I have a picky, I'm very picky about what I'm looking at in an image as I do retouching for a living. Um, so when I say a built-in transparency tray, you will only find that on the big flatbed scanners, the one that go in $300 and up uh, by the brands that I mentioned. And what that is, they, they have the glass where you put the print or the document, and then they have a tray that you pull out which has, its own, which has a second bulb underneath it where you can put your negatives or your uh, transparencies. Again, I'm not too uh, impressed yet with a flatbed scanner's ability to get the detail of a, neg a 35 millimeter negative or slide but they're really good when you deal with two and a quarter, uh, three by five, and eight by 10 negatives. Epson, uh, Microtech and Epson, they have glass trays where you can put a glass negative on top of it, or even a glass eight by 10, and it does a really good job. You may have little things like Newton rings and weird anomalies like that, but that can be over. Now the third, and it's, 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 not commonly found, but Microtech, and Microtech's big scanners, they have it, is removal of the glass for, for cleaning. And what I mean by that, if you, when you lift up your, your flatbed scanner and you clean the glass, that's nice. But there's also dust and smudge that builds up on the other side of the glass. And what, what happens is when, they man, when these are manufactured, remember these are all manufactured, these are generally just plastic and, and some wires, some conduit. The plastic petroleum product emits fumes, especially after it's newly manufactured. And it builds up as a gas on the other side of the glass. So you... <laughs> The average person won't notice really a difference if you scan one that's clean and scan one that's not. But it does make a subtle difference in the quality of the scan. So again, the, the more convenience, the more of these options I'm giving you, of course, the higher the price. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's worth it if you're going to do this yourself and you want to do it right. All right. Now, for anything that you purchase, like I said before, a flatbed scanner really can't give you the detail of a dedicated slide scanner, OK? Uh, the other thing that, that we forget about is cleanliness, OK? And after even one use of a, of a flatbed scanner, you can have an unintentional fingerprint on there, a smudge. Sometimes if you're dealing with an old document that's crumbling, you're going to have little pieces of that as well, OK? 
And when you use uh, tin types or anything with a hard edge, it will scratch the gl glass, you know. And glass does scratch, okay. So you got to be careful about that. Um, so when you clean, it's really important when you clean, spray the cloth. Maybe, maybe something that's not cheap, like a cheap paper towel. Spray the cloth with your window cleaner, like Windex, and then you wipe it. No need to spray the glass directly because the liquid will seep into the edges and it'll be hard to get out. Looks kind of nasty. Now the third part, this can only be done after you, um, after you make a purchase. And, and that is uh, finding the scanner sweet spot. And, you know, I apologize that I didn't put the step-by-step -step in the handout, it, you know, and I, I, sometimes I get annoyed when I'm reading, I'm looking at a syllabus and it's, it's more like an outline for the speaker. It's not necessarily anything I can use uh, that shows me something and here I went and did it. But um, I apologize for that. But it's pretty simple. Every scanner is a little different, even if it's the same model. So I'm going to do a quick preview here of the entire bed of, of the scanner surface. And then I'm just going to scan it without any images, without any documents. Because this will help you get the best out of your, the, 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 the highest, the best quality out of your scanner. So make sure I don't have any filters on here. Good. Okay, I'm going to hit scan. See settings. Hit OK. And it's going to take less than a minute. Any, any quick questions on something I just said that I lost you on? What kind of cleaner yeah. do you use? Yeah, yeah, I like Windex. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really good stuff. No, no, I wouldn't use the LCD uh, laptop cleaner just because I'm not too familiar with it. And this is glass. This is a laptop cleaner's plastic, generally, you know, with paint on it. So it's, it's, it's a little different. That other stuff, it might streak on the glass. And you don't want any streaking if you can help it. Okay, so when I scan, uh, in this case, I'm scanning directly to the, to the hard drive here. Okay, how many of you have Photoshop? Raise your hand. Just Adobe Photoshop, the full version. Adobe Photoshop. How many of you have Adobe Photoshop Elements? Okay. How many of you have PaintShop Pro? Yep. And how many have something else? Okay. All right. Okay, this will still kind of apply, but it, to translate it might be a bit difficult. So this is okay. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, yeah. Just give me give me a second here. Um, I want to open up this little. Come on. Okay. Okay, so here's just the blank document, okay? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into what's called levels, okay? In, in Elements, it's under uh, Enhance. In Photoshop, it's under Image Adjust. And then what I do is I'm going to bring these little triangles, the white and the black triangles, really close together, dragging the black triangle, which means shadows or dark, all the way over to the right. Okay, isn't that pretty? You can go now. But this, what, what I'm doing with this is, this is showing me the quality of the scan. Boy, that's pretty bad. It's pretty rough looking. It, it is. Um, if you look at, let's examine this. This lighter area here, these are the best spots of the scanner. All these less. This captures the most detail. Okay? But notice on the edges, it's dark. 
And then you got this weird anomaly down. And then you got it right here. Um, this, this is why you shouldn't put your photos right up against the edge of the scanner. Not only will the scanner crop it a little bit, okay, it will uh, miss some details. On the, it'll fall off. So it's really important to put your photo or your image, if it's small enough, in the center or in the sweet spots like these areas here. Don't go too crazy with it because what I did is I've, I've really con I made the, the contrast very, very harsh here. So it's, it's an exaggeration. It doesn't mean you're not going to get anything. But what it does mean is that you don't want to put something on the edge right here. Okay? So what I like to do is I'll take my business card here, or a card. Let me close this. And by the way, that banding there, that's, that's an anomaly. That shouldn't be there. It, it doesn't normally show up like that. But, you know, sometimes when your scanner's acting goofy, if you can uh, trash the preference file or sometimes you have to reinstall it, whatever you do, when you start having weird anomalies like that, kind of start, start all over again. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just do a, a picture just for this to show you exactly what I mean so you can see it on the screen, okay? I have my card and then I put my print. Now in the preview here, Okay, so you see I have my card there, right? And then I have the picture. So it's in the middle area. That's what I, that's what I want to do. I never want to have it hanging edge. So you get that point, right? You, you follow me? Good. Okay, so now we can move on to the next part here. Let me get this. Okay. And it's, it's nice to get these cotton gloves, uh, uh, you know, fun stuff for genealogists and others sell them. Get your little loop so you can look close in on things, your tombstone rubbing wax. Okay, yeah. She and I conspired for me to plug her, her place. Um, you can tell her I said that. Okay. So now we're going to just scan individual photos. Now it depends. Everything is a little different the way you scan it. So again, we did an individual photo. I just want to grab a different one in this case. I want to keep it kind of straight if I can. Keep that down. I'm going to hit preview. And yesterday, uh, we, we talked about document restoration. And there's another course that I do just on where we get into all the details of resolution and file format, okay? But, so this isn't on your handout, so you might want to write this down. The resolution, which is up here, okay, on my scanner driver, is at 300 DPI, okay? And I always scan in color as well, as you see up here. All right, and this is 24-bit color. That's good enough. 48-bit color is not really necessary when you're scanning, uh, especially for archival purposes. It, but some of you may disagree with me, and that's perfectly fine. But I'm not going to get into that debate today. Uh, also, your scaling or your, your zooming or, or the percentage, 100% is, is a minimum. But if you can do 150 or something, especially if the image is smaller, I recommend doing that. But 100, at least 100 at 300 dpi, that's, that's what you should be concerned about. And no need to do any fancy filters right here. As you can see, it says adjustments. We're not going to be doing any of these filters. And then you crop it. And what I like to do when I crop, in the flatbed is give a little space in the top and the bottom here. Okay? 
just a little space. Because when I bring it into Photoshop or whatever photo editing program I have, I can do the, the final crop later, okay? And then we're gonna hit scan, and I'm gonna save it directly to the hard drive. Now, what I prefer to do, in most cases, I prefer to work directly with the scanner. You notice in Photoshop, you can do an import, file import, and then it will, you can import your scanner. Only problem with that is it will slow you down if you have a lot of work, okay? I like to work directly with the scanner software, which, which comes with the scanner, and just save everything to the hard drive. And then later on, I'll work in, in, in my editing program. Everybody all right? Yes, ma'am. You had it set at newspaper? Didn't well, it wasn't checked. Oh, it wasn't Those checked. Those things weren't checked. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, none of those filters were checked. And your, your, your driver might be different. Uh, you know, what do you have? What, Epson. You have Epson, yeah. So you have that same software. Yeah. <laughs> HP may look a little different, but generally they're all the same. And sometimes you can't even see the filters if it's in a home mode or beginner mode. You have to usually go to advanced mode to be able to access those filters to even turn them off. Okay, so anyways, we scan to the hard drive. And just let me open this in Photoshop real quick just to show you how it ended up looking, okay? So you see all that stuff on the side. So in this case, I'm just going to crop a little bit there, okay? And then I would start working on the picture. You'd like to leave a margin on it, around it, Well, you know, it's, it, yeah, just to be safe. Why not? Is it harming it? You know, is it distracting it? No. You know, and it's part of the original flavor. It's interesting in those round corners. I, I don't, it says something about the age of the photo, the, the, the style of the, the, the photographer, okay? Working on the pictures would be a different class. <laughs> okay. So when you write up your Eric back, you need to show me how to do these pictures. Okay. All right. Now, next thing I like to show you people is scanning multiple photos, okay? And scanning multiple photos is nice because it saves a lot of time, okay? Now, every scanner, every decent scanner, especially the brands that I mentioned, allow you to do this. So what I'm doing is I'm laying out, I'm gonna do three pictures, okay? and I'm laying them out again. I have my business card there. And, and it's really not blatant advertising. I'm just, <laughs> it just fits, you know? And I always have one with me. I'm do the same thing with a ruler. Just make sure it's not too thick, okay? All right, so now we're gonna, we're gonna hit preview. You always gotta do preview or overview, depends on your, your brand, the scanner brand. It's giving me preview here. Okay, so there you go, you see the three. Okay, so let's do the first crop box. I like to start at the top. Give it some room, like we did before. And then I'm gonna click and drag right here at the bottom. And this will form a second box. And notice there's a little overlap, but that's okay. I can crop it later, right? Then I click and drag the third one. Give it a little more room. Uh, more expensive scanners will even have a pre, uh, uh, and they'll have an overview, which that, that's what this is. And then they'll have a preview, where they'll actually preview each one. And you can rotate each of the images. Now, in this case, I, I gotta be honest, I have trouble, um, rotating the images in the Epson scanner. A mental impasse for me. <laughs> so I rotate later in Photoshop. <laughs> but you can do it here. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to hit. Okay. I'm going to shift click each one of these boxes. 
Now this is where the scanner manufacturer software will differ a little bit. But now I have all three. Notice all three have marching ants now, okay? Now the only problem with that though is I gotta check my settings because each item that I put that marching ants on uh, uh, has different settings. If you look at this top one, it says scale 150 and resolution, that's 300, good. But when I click on the one underneath it, it says resolution 300 and scale 100, okay? And that's because by default, by default, uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to click outside of the marching ants box so I can reset this to be, set this to be 150. This is the second one. This is the middle picture I'm working on, okay? You got to pay careful attention when you're doing this. Of course, I'm doing everything in color, always scan in color. And let's make this 150, okay? It'll slow us down a little bit, but I just doing this for teaching purposes. Now I'm going to shift click. There, I got all three of them going. I'm going to hit scan now. Let me try that again. Okay, okay. Now, here's something neat with the Epson software and other manufacturers have the same thing. I like to use this prefix. So notice I have, instead of untitled one, titled two. You notice how sometimes you scan it says untitled, untitled. Well, prefix, I can set it to let's say, uh, what's, what's their names? Give me just the fam one family name for this group of pictures you Angel. see. Angel? Yeah. yeah. So let's just say Angel. And then we're going to go the start number at one. Now later on, a couple days later, or next week, next month, next year, whenever I get around to doing more scanning of Angel, the eight photos dealing with the Angel name, uh, uh, I can set it for a different start number, you know, just to catch up. And of course, I always save it to a folder. And in this case today, because we're at the Ohio Genealogical Society conference, I made a folder called OGS 2008. Image format. I always save it as TIFF, not as a JPEG. Anybody know why? Raise your hand. In the back. JPEG. See, she read it right. At, she read it right out of the textbook there. The she, image uh, JPEG format compresses the image, and you lose image quality. Okay, and JPEG is only good for sending files out to people. Okay, to share. And then what you do, what I do, what I always tell people, and, and this isn't in your handout, but while we're scanning, you know, I can talk about this, is what I do is I scan everything as TIFF, and then when I have to send something to somebody or I have to upload it to a website, whatever, I save it as, save as a JPEG, save a copy as a JPEG, and I can even make it smaller if I want. And then I send that, and then I delete that from my hard drive. Not the TIFF, the JPEG. <laughs> you don't want to be stuck with multiple versions of images on your hard drive if you can help it. And of course, you should be backing up your hard drive every day, right? Those of you that are not backing up every day, I'll be like your dentist. You better floss, OK? Because you will get in trouble. It's, it's guaranteed. And then after you back up, you should be archiving. You should be saving everything on the DVD uh, or CDR, C CD-R or DVD-R. Okay, not rewritables, recordables. Rewritables are not archival quality CDs. This is not in your handout. <laughs> yes, in the back. Okay. Sh no, no. Microtech's got it too. I got a Microtech. Sh shift click. Make, make, okay, you did your first box, then hold down the shift key, make your second box. Hold down the shift key, make your third box. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, everything you don't have to do the shift click. It's a great question. Okay. So, I'm, I'm not going to open all these in Photoshop, but what I would do in Photoshop, I would open them up, I'd rotate them, okay? 
do crop, do a little fix, and then that close them and save them, move on to the next one, okay? And it is almost done. Actually, I should have scanned them all at a 100%. It wouldn't take so long. And of course, the higher the resolution, the longer it will take. And um, if you want to go higher than 300, uh, that's fine. 300 pixels per inch, dots per inch, that's fine. Um, I just tell people 300 because you can't go wrong with 300. It's an industry standard. Does it depend on the size of the photo that you're doing? Yeah. So yeah. Have a real small one. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a real small one, then that's what I would go to, like I showed you here with the scaling and increase it 200, 150, 200, 300, 400 percent. I would make it bigger. Under scaling, but yeah. you wouldn't change the resolution. Yeah, I'd keep the resolution at 300. It translates better that way, at least for the user. Okay, uh, yes? Uh, sometimes when I scan a photograph, it'll, when I preview, it uh, sets up already for me, you know, like three boxes. Yeah. You know, yeah, you got to delete those boxes, like I'm going to do here. What kind of scanner do you have? Well, I can't remember the brand name. Okay. But it's a printer uh, scanner. Okay, well, I just hit delete and I got rid of two boxes right there. That, that's probably the only way you can do it. Okay, now the next one, the next portion is negatives and slides. Okay, so how are we doing on time? Before I do that, because I'm going to have to take it apart a little bit, I'd like to jump ahead. And that is newspaper. How, ma how many of you were here yesterday? Okay, some of you weren't here yesterday. So those of you who were yesterday, Maybe I can get you a different picture. Now that you have the how do you separate them? Well, they scan separately. They each one scans separately in Photoshop. That's why I did three. Okay. Because if you look here on my see the new files. Here they are, Angel 1, Angel 3, Angel 2, Angel 1. Save time. Save lots of time. You got a whole bunch of pictures? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I always, I always do that. Well, let's get here. For you people that were here yesterday, you're going to have a new picture. Those of you who weren't... I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, so what, what happens when I have a, a, a picture that was printed? Whether a newspaper... It was printed in a book, it was printed in a magazine, and I want to put that in my archives. Well, you just do it, right? You just scan it. Yeah, okay, well, let's do that. So here we go, let's get this gentleman here. Let's just say he's a, you know, relative, ancestor, whatever. I'm going to make this 100%. Okay, and I'm going to give it a prefix just so I can keep track of newspaper. Okay. And I'm just going to scan it, and we're going to open it up. Should take just a second, yep, real quick. Good. And let me just drag this down here. Now you can do all this stuff in, in, in Photoshop, everything, uh, elements. Okay. See those weird patterns? Yeah. See that? That's really odd. It, it doesn't look so nice. Those, that's the moray. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Be patient. Okay, every scanner has what's called de-screening filters. And if you look right here on my scanner, I'm going to check that, de-screening. Now, the ruling, you have to qualify it. Okay, is it a newspaper, magazine, or a fine print? It's a newspaper. And sometimes if you're not sure or you want to see what the de-screening would be like for that image, you can go through all three of them and see how they look to you. Okay, I'm going to hit scan. And, and when you uh, are, are scanning these, I forgot what I was going to say. But uh, we'll, we'll see when it comes up. I might remember. Oh yes, I was going to tell you how it works. Uh, it's not a trade secret here. Let me get this other one open. 
so we can compare. Okay, so here's bef here's here's before, here's after. Can you see the difference? Before, after. D screen got rid of all that stuff. Now, the the, re the the way it works, it's simple. It just uh, slightly blurs the head back and forth. It slightly blurring the image. And you can do this on your own manually, but it takes a lot of work to get it right. But that was quick. You know what I mean? And it's a nice way, and I could get a decent little headshot out of it for at least a pedigree chart, you know. It, it, it might not, I don't think it would be good for an eight by 10, you know, print, you know, behind a hundred dollar frame. But, you know, if... Out of the back of this. Yeah, yeah, but that's another class. <laughs> not here, not here. <laughs> something on the back. So what do you The only problem with putting some it's it's not really going to work. It'll work with it might work with the it, it's it's not going to really work cuz it's the ink is going through the paper, through the other side. You know what I mean? Okay. So it might work for 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 higher quality paper, but newsprint it just doesn't work. It's not nice. Okay. So now, what do you do when you have an, an oversized original? Okay. Um, uh, when you have an oversized original, you can do a copy shot of it with a camera, or you can scan it in parts. So let's just say I scanned it in parts. I I don't have an oversized, and I don't want to. I wouldn't want to demonstrate it. Here, so I have actually already an oversized image that I already scanned. Okay, so I'm going to open all four parts in Photoshop. So here, I scanned this. This actually, I remember the customer that brought this. She gave it to me, and I scanned it with this scanner that you see here. Uh, so here's all the parts. Just let's review them real quick. Okay. Top, middle, bottom. I got two middle ones. Actually, for some reason, I didn't include the, the bottom part, but <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but it doesn't matter. Let's put these together. Now, the first thing I recommend is using, if there's something automatic to do it, do it. <laughs> now, and, and, and then if it doesn't work, then you do it. Or you can fine tune it. Now, in Photoshop, they got something called uh, uh, photo merge. In Elements, the latest version of Elements has something called um, composition. I forgot exactly what, but it does basically the same thing. Okay? So I'm going to file automate uh, photo, uh, photo merge. This is a neat little function. Okay? So it says, give me what, what, what are your source files? Okay? So here, here they are. I want you to, Photoshop, I want you to take one, two, three, and four. I could, I could remove one of them, too, if I wanted. Or I could say, get them out of a folder. But in this case, I'm going to say, use what's open already. Then I'm going to check this box. Attempt to automatically arrange source images. And this is nice even if you do happen to have a panorama uh, shot in different pieces. And right now, it's, it's automatically going through all the steps to uh, make a lay. It, it might have a little trouble. It might tell me, eh, I can't do it right. But that's close. OK? So let me zoom in a little bit. Here's, this is a preview window. OK? And I'm going to check over here. I'm going to say, keep as layers. OK? Now, that's somewhat of an advanced technique. But Elements has, you can work in layers. And what that means, it's going to put all four of these pieces into separate layers, which I can move around and fine tune, okay? And I want to hit OK. And, and right now it's, it's a, doing the final assembly. Everybody OK? All right. Hope you're having fun. If you don't have fun in this one, I hope you're having fun in the next one. Yes, yes. 
multiple yeah. Uh, there's a, it's a keyboard shortcut. I hit Control uh, Tab. Control Tab. Yeah. Okay. So let's get rid of these uh, originals because it takes up RAM for Photoshop to display a bunch of pictures. So now we can look just at this one. So here's the pieces. Okay. And what I'm going to have to do is erase parts, you know, to, to make it blend. But what I can do is I'm, I'm going to turn off each one of these in layers. I'm clicking the eyeball on the layer palette of the layer I want to turn off. Okay. So this one I can get the eraser tool, which is a very crude tool. Typically I wouldn't... Uh, use such a tool. We get a big brush. I, I use what's called layer mask, but again, that's another class. I just want to show you real quickly. See? Okay, so we got rid of that nasty line. And then we have up on top, I think. Yeah, here he is. So I can click on this top layer, and I just erase a little bit of this junk. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So here's before, after. Now, we're not done. I have to keep going if I was to finish this. But for demonstration purposes, there you go. This is possible. And this is what you do with an oversize. Now, if you have text, if it's a document, you're going to have a lot of work to do. Because you're going to have to manipulate the, uh, uh, the layers, maybe by distorting them a little bit to make them fit. So in this case, I will uh, transform or distort certain parts, you know, to make, make them fit. And there's something called the warp tool. I believe Elements has that as well. But we got to move on to the next one. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, we are doing good. Okay. Now, For documents, I have this naturalization certificate that I like to use because it, it has a photo. It's actually got a real photo in it. Okay. And what I recommend in documents is you try seeing them in different modes, uh, uh, color, grayscale, even trying line art modes. I'll show you that in a second. And my scanner software is loading up. Come on. All right, any questions there while it's loading up? What I just did? Okay, here we go. Come on. All right, it's, it's moving. Uh, okay, come on. I shouldn't have quit it. Actually, that's that's the problem. Okay, tip preview. Aha. Now notice it's kind of chopped off on the edges there. And what did I say about the edges? Take it off the edge. Just give it some room, right? If you don't have a card, you know, just. Best estimate. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do another preview because I just moved it up a little bit. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. Okay, so now let's set our crop box. And do this one in color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the size at 75 just to speed it up. Here. Let's say naturally. Okay. Now, the way I'm using the, the prefix and the serial numbers, I'm really just doing that in the context of teaching and demonstrating something. You can modify that to your, your own liking. It's very handy. 
So this is an overall color scan that I'm doing. And it says two minutes remaining, but that's, that's not true. It, actually, the de-screening filter is on. That's why it's doing that. So let me hit cancel. If, you're, if, you're, if it's slow, if your scan is slow, check to see if the de-screening filter is on, because that will slow it down. And look, lo and behold, there it is. I, I unchecked it here. OK, let's do, let's do this again. OK. All right, now this will be a little faster. Less than a minute. All right. <coughs> so any questions there? What is that, the pad you're using? Oh, this. What is this thing? This is called a, a, a Wacom or Wacom tablet, depending on how you. It's got a stylus here and a, and a sensitive tab here. It's all magic, you know? <laughs> and uh, it, it just it saves on my wrist and my arm. I mean, I'll spend hours and hours working on pictures. So to be mouse clicking, and it's, it's very unhealthy. Yeah. So uh, you could get these for a little over $100. And this is a lower end model. This is, this is like, your, like a Ford Festiva. And then they have the one that's like a <laughs> Cadillac. Cadillac, you know. And that's the one I keep in the office. Oh, uh, Wacom, Wacom, W-A-C-O-M. Yeah. Okay, so, so now let's open this one up. Uh, I'm in the wrong place. Here it is. Okay. And then while we're doing, while that opens, I am going to show you line black and white. Okay, we're going to scan that. Now, when I do a black and white mode, generally that's good for just plain text. But again, let's just see what happens. When I do it in black, when I scan in black and white mode, I, I like to increase the resolution by four times. So in this case, it would be 1,200 DPI. Now, if you get what's called Adobe Acrobat Professional, not only can you scan documents accurately, but Adobe, uh, this is not Photoshop. This is, a, this is a, you've seen PDF documents. Well, this is the professional version of that. It will take your scan, and then it will read the text. It makes searchable text in your document. Now, with a document like this, the, the cursive writing, the script writing, will not look so great. It, it, I don't think it will work properly with that. But it will certainly look good with uh, a plain typewritten text. So let me rotate this image counterclockwise. Okay. So, and we take a look. Okay. So this is really this is pretty good. Okay. Pretty good detail in here. Okay. Now the only problem is if I work on this to fix the color. Let's say the text. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be doing that one. Let me do levels. Image adjust levels. This is the same thing I grabbed when I was uh, doing the, looking for the scanner sweet spot. Doing a quick contrast move here just to make it more legible. Not look so old. Let's get rid of some of that yellow by adding blue. Now, th now the text looks a lot better. But the picture doesn't look so great, does it? OK? Now, there's a lot of ways to go about doing that. There's something called selection where we could do that. But I wanted to show you another way. In a second here. Come on. Especially when you find these documents, it's, it's really nice, these naturalization documents that have a photo in them. Just scan the photo by itself. Scan. Okay. And while that while that's doing that, let's open up the line art version, or the black so-called black and white, which is, which is an accurate term for for the line art. Let's see how that looked. Okay. So there you go. Definitely lacks a lot of 
tail. This counterclockwise. But what's nice about it, what's nice about it is I got really crisp text. Okay? So we, we lack detail, but we have crisp text. And this is something you should do really when you just have text. But I did want to show you on this document. The picture's loading or scanning. It's taking too long. Maybe I had that deep screening filter on again. Oh, let me see. Okay. Oh, because I had it at twelve hundred DPI, I didn't change it. No problem, no problem. Let me open it up and Photoshop. Change it in there. Too fast. I'm not that sloppy. Okay, so let's rotate this because I see your heads are starting to go this way, so I better <laughs> fix her for you there. Okay, so I'm gonna go to image, image size. And that's okay. You know, you know what? If you want to scan in real big all the time, nothing wrong with that. Just don't ever scan something small and then try to blow it up in Photoshop. Scan it big and shrink it in Photoshop. So here what, I, here what I'm going to do, I'm going to take what's called the lasso tool, which is a selection tool, and I'll just do a little selection around her picture. Okay, and I, now I can use that in a pedigree chart or something. And let me soften it a little bit. I know that's a little, you're, what are you doing Eric? But that would be another class. Let me move this here. Okay, there she is. Now sorry about that, those lines that you see, that's, I think that has something to do with my RAM. I upgraded RAM, I think it was cheap stuff. I got it off of eBay, yeah. Um, so these lines here were not in the scan. That's just showing up on, on, on my... Um, so here's before and after. So I just pasted it on there. It's kind of nice, you know. Um, let's see if the detail is different too. And before I change the color, let's see how that looks. And about the same. Detail was the same. Boy, those lines are getting worse. So, there you go. There's a the document. Now, let's see if we do a quick negative here. Close this. Close this. All right. Now, take this off. And here's a, here's a 35 your negative. Okay. And up here in my scanner software, in my driver, I'm going to have to change the, uh, uh, um, some of the settings so it can accept a negative. You're all, all of them have this. Document type, instead of, doing? okay, seven minutes. Uh, document type, reflective, which is stuff that, which is something that you put on the glass. Okay, well, it's not going to be that anymore. Now it's going to be film. And the Epson V350 has an auto film loader. So I'm going to choose that. And it asks me, you know, it says this preview image is going to be erased. And uh, I get this uh, fancy glove here that you can get at fun stuff for genealogists. <laughs> Make sure you tell her, okay? I, I did that. Now, when you're dealing with negatives and slides, it's really important to wear these gloves that you can get for fun stuff. No, I'll stop. <laughs> but if you can get one of those compressed air cans to, to clean it off, you should do that. If you can't, one thing, I was working at a photo lab back in college days, that you take a nice cotton glove, with your two fingers here, and just swipe like this. And generally, that will get rid of most of the big stuff, okay? And then let's put it in the film loader here. Let's see if I if I did this right. 
and it, 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 it takes it, it loads it up, and it eats it up and tears it up into little pieces, I hope not. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Okay, now I'm going to hit preview. Now the interesting thing about negatives, if you scan a negative at 100% size, that means your image is going to be really small. Oh. <laughs> right? Think about that. So it's a little different when you're scanning negatives and slides. Um, and it's warming up. I thought you were warm. I've been using it. Did you take that white cover off? Um, no, I didn't. I forgot. Do I have to do that for this one? I think I have to, right? Yeah. See, it, 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 it goes to show you that I really don't use this thing that much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gee, we're going to add this guy back again. <laughs> I know he's sitting there saying, I think I could teach this one. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for your understanding. OK, it's, it's still warming up. So in the meantime, let's take some questions. What size did you, you said don't do it at 100%? Right, right. Max it out. When you're dealing with a negative you, or, a, or a 35 millimeter negative or slide, you want to max out the resolution. And sometimes the file can, usually the file will end up being about 50 megabytes. Now the only problem here is I forgot to change it from positive film to negative film. So let's go color negative. Now if it was black and white film, I would still scan it in as color. Okay? And the reason why is because when you scan in color, you get three channels of detail. As the people from yesterday's class, you have much more detail when you scan in color. It can be a subtle difference to the untrained eye. But later on in Photoshop, you can convert it to a grayscale. And actually, you know, it's, it's, it's called black and white film, but it's not a black and white picture. If it was a black and white picture digitally, it would look like black and white, like you saw that document that I did. OK. So here's the negative film. OK. And I set my crop box just like any other um, uh, uh, image. And some clues to what the size will be, if you look, it'll say target size is one inch by about two inches. So that shows I need to change the resolution or the scaling. In this case, I'm going to change the resolution. Let's see if I go to 4800. OK? And that might take a long time for here. So let's leave it at 300. And then let's change the scaling to 300. Now we can get a better idea. So if you watch, when I changed the scaling to 300, it came out to be 3 by 5. So I think that's good. That's decent. So let me hit Scan. <laughs> and we'll call uh, negative 1. And then I want to open it, and then we'll be done. And of course, I'm saving as TIFF. Have you ever noticed when you save as a TIFF that it asks you if you want LZW compression? Raise your hand if you've seen that. OK, we, had a, okay, we got one geek like myself. Um, that's OK. LZW compression is good. It's, it's a lossless form of compression. You're OK. Uh, and it'll make the TIFF smaller. It's a, there's a funny thing that goes on with that if you upload it, but I don't want to bother anybody. Any other questions? <laughs> yes? Um, I have some really old negatives. Uh-huh. Some, you know, they range from little tiny oh, yeah. to the you know, 620s, the one, you know, back. Yes, yes. And they were my grandmother's. 120, yeah. And on my Two, scanner, uh-huh. I haven't figured out how to, because it's got the 35 and then it's uh, got the one for the oh, slides. Yeah. Now, how do I scan those? Well, you just got to, if, if it's able to fit those, you just got to follow the directions. But if it doesn't fit them, don't try to scan it. You know, it, it won't work. You have to get a, you got to get a scanner that can handle big negatives. You know what I mean? Don't try to. Well, Epson, Microtech, uh, and Hewlett-Packard sell scanners that can handle large, large 
you know, medium and large format negatives, yeah. Yeah. Next next to you, ma'am. Yes. I was uh, wondering, you have a take on the pen scanners or those long tubes? The tube scanners? Those are the, the readers. Those read uh, uh, documents. Yeah, those are good for documents that, that are typed up. But I, I don't deal with that, really. I, maybe I should, but I just don't. Um, let me go to, let me, let's open this negative and see how it looked. Okay. So, uh, again, let's rotate so that I don't hurt your necks. Uh, so, not bad. Let's do a quick crop. I'm going to do a, a, a real quick color correction, and don't try to follow me right now with this. I'm going to go real fast just because I want to make this look better. And this color correction technique that I'm doing here is taught in, in my book and my, my tutorials that are available at the table. Okay, so not bad. Not bad. So there's the detail. You know. But a but a, uh, uh, a Nikon will still do better in the dark areas here, but this is really good. This is decent. Okay, so that's that's good. That's good. So any last questions? Because I know we're we're at 10:31. So tell you what, since we're at 10:31, I don't want to insult the uh, our host here. So why don't you why don't we shut down? Okay, and but then ask me your questions as I'm breaking down, and then you can ask me more questions. Um, Exhibit Hall.